so please warm welcome for Vince Borea. So, thank you for the introduction. Um, my name again is Vincenzo Barrea, and I work for, I've been working for Moody's for the last three years. Um, Moody's is a, a rating agency, and what a rating agency does is uh, evaluate what's the probability that an entity will not pay back its debt. And I say entity because we don't uh, only evaluate companies, but also uh, states, cities, any entity that needs to needs funds, essentially. So the higher the risk that uh, that company will not pay back the debt, uh, the higher will be the interests. Um, the way we operate is subject to a lot of laws and regulation from the government. So um, our policy are pretty strict and segregative, but uh, today I will try to give you as many information as possible. So uh, this is how it looks, our current uh, financial research process. Our analysts essentially gather information from structured and unstructured uh, sources. Um, an example of unstructured uh, source can be news or insights on what will happen in the next year. One example could be Brexit, for example. And uh, a structured uh, source can be our internal database. They analyze the data and they um, produce insights. And in the end, they will write reports uh, describing what the, uh, the output of that analysis was. So this is a very manual and time-consuming process. With the new emerging technologies, we, uh, we are able to speed up a little bit the process. Um, using natural language process, processing that you can see on the left and natural language generation that you can see on the right. So with natural language processes we are able to extract data from unstructured sources. And with natural language generation we are able to describe what, uh, what the data is telling us. Our um, product, uh, currently, most of the natural language generation products available on the market are very rule-based, with logic coded or configured. And essentially, what this process does is uh, gather the data, retrieve the elements that are relevant, uh, um, and understand how they interact with each other, and producing uh, report. So this process tend to be backward looking. Um, what we uh, are trying to do is to generate a software more forward looking oriented, which will be able to understand trends, understand what are the key factors and why those are key factors and produce insights and describe the, these insights not only in a textual way but also producing charts. Um, and this is where we want to apply artificial intelligence and machine learning. This task is pretty challenging. And so we use TOGAF across the whole enterprise, but especially in this case, we've used TOGAF methodologies and its iterative process to implement and evolve our natural language generation capabilities. We work closely with our business users and stakeholders, 
getting them comfortable with publishing machine written content and assessing business transformation readiness to adopt this new technology. Um, we have used TOGAF uh, across the iteration that we will see in the next uh, slides. And uh, as a company, we believe that uh, a TOGAF approach is uh, really work. And uh, the insights that are produced using TOGAF uh, really help is an example of one of the many diagrams uh, that we have produced using TOGAF uh, architecture framework, where on the top we describe the process flow, um, at the bottom we describe what's the information that we, uh, lever we leverage, like model narratives, data, natural language generation models, and the logical application components on the bottom,
one of the best achievement was the what we call internally the asset library. So instead of producing a report entirely, we were producing single parts of the report. And the analysts were able to out discover those uh, paragraphs. And the system also suggests to the analysts what's the best paragraph to use. And it notifies the user if there are changes, if the paragraph has changed, so they can compare them, they can, and eventually they can update the report. And this was uh, key for our success in phase two. And so the outcome, as I mentioned, were, were the, uh, the introduction of these new components. And uh, we were able to have this modular design reusable services, and reusable services means less time to market for new functionalities. So it's very important. But the limitation was uh, still, well, still the natural language generation software, which was still rule-based. And the cost of develop new uh, type of paragraph was pretty high. And we managed to produce different types of paragraphs, like market share, asset quality, liquidity analysis, which are types of uh, sections in our financial reports. And as I mentioned, we use them singularly in our, individually in our reports. And this led to phase three. We worked and we challenged this building system again, and we came, came up with this new ar microservice architecture where the user can just mention in the report, I want this analysis, instead of looking for that analysis, that analysis in our report, on our database, and the system will automatic automatically understand the context in which the user is operating, retrieve the proper data for that uh, report, process the data, and in the end, uh, ultimately, it will introduce that data into the report. So very flexible, very scalable, and this is how it looks. Uh, we have a content tag library on the left. The user can drag and drop it into the report. Um, they will look like placeholders, and they will just pop up later as a paragraph, a sentence. And this is how we would like to see our users operating, like Tom Cruise's minority report, dragging and dropping stuff around. Um, again, we were very happy with these new capabilities. Uh, we now can treat data as an asset to drag and drop in our report, more than something to analyze singularly. Um, again, the limitation was still in the natural language generation module. So that's why I want to introduce the machine learning. So on the left, we have the old paradigm without machine learning. And the process was uh, there are business analysts that along with business users and stakeholders define um, what are the rules, what are the conditions, what are the needs that we have to match, what are, how we have to implement those. And then the software engineer code the rules to solve that specific problem. And in the end, the outcome, outcome is this software. The software receives inputs and produces outputs. With machine learning, instead of coding the software, we code a software that is able to produce the rules for us and produce the best software to achieve this uh, target. And how we do that? We create a model and we feed the model, that's called the training, with lots of input and lots of outputs um, to create the final program that will solve our problem. To give you an example, we can, f 
think of Google, Google search. Like in US, the Giants are both a baseball team in San Francisco and an American football team in New York. So what result should we suggest to the user? Maybe we can look at the location of the user, and if the user is in San Francisco, he probably wants to know about the baseball team. If the user is in New York, he wants to know about the, new, um, the American football team. But coding all these rules on a global way is not scalable, cannot be done by humans. So we need a machine that is able to learn. But can a machine learn how to write? So um, Zach Tut, uh, is a software engineer, did this experiment. This was mentioned before, but now in yesterday from um, my manager Steve, and now we are going to deep more into the technicalities of this. So he used the machine learning to write a few chapters of the sixth Game of Thrones book. He used Google TensorFlow to achieve this result. Google TensorFlow is a framework provided by Google to uh, essentially uh, create machine learning models and create a long short term memory model. A long short term memory model is a specific uh, type of model for machine learning that we are not going more deeper than this. Um, the input for this model wo were the first five books of the series, which had 32,000 words, if each of them identified by a unique ID, not other input to help learning grammar or syntax. And he was pretty successful in mimicking the style of writing the Game of Thrones, but he has very gra a lot of grammar errors, and he didn't clearly understand the context. Some characters that have died before uh, all of a sudden they were able, well, they, they returned in, in the story and they were doing things. So the ideal uh, and why um, we had this outcome. Well, first is a, a very tough problem. Um, we needed at least 100 times the input that we, uh, with which we feed the machine and a more simplistic grammar such a, a children's book vocabulary. So that's why our approach will be a mixed approach. Here is our current natural language generation uh, model. So we have logical rules like text function, synonyms, and computation, and we have conceptual rules like they like ontologies, uh, analytics, users' preferences. Maybe the users want to use a, mm, a certain set of uh, synonyms more than others. And produce a, a new NLG module is really a coding exercise. You have rules that indicate when we can say certain sentences. You have to input all the sentences' variations. Like, let's imagine if the revenue of a company increase. Um, we want to describe that fact, not using the same paragraph. Otherwise, we are going to generate the same type of paragraph over and over. But we want to have a range of sentences that we can use. And more deep at objective level uh, is the same. We want a set of synonyms to describe a certain fact. And we want ranges uh, because uh, it's different if the revenue of a company are increasing f you know, fast or slow. And we want to describe that, this fact uh, in different way. So generate uh, text, as I mentioned, is difficult. And that's why our approach will be Mm, a mixed approach. We want still have this rule-based natural language generation, but we want to make it more fine-grained, and we want the machine to understand how to mix 
and match these paragraphs. So it's a challenge um, task. We are still working on it, uh, but we are confident that from, from here to a um, few years, this will be accomplished. Questions? Couple of questions. Do take a seat, Vince, please. Thank you very much for that. For uh, drilling down a bit deeper on uh, what Steve was saying yesterday. So uh, yes, it's uh, it's good stuff. I love the uh, the Game of Thrones thing where they, um, forgot one of the characters. Somebody had died because that, that happens a lot in Game of Thrones. So. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, uh, we we heard uh, a, a different case study from a, a, a charity type approach. Moody's is clearly a very different organization to the to the relatively small charity there. Can you say something about the, the team that's involved or was involved in the architecture project and was it were, was the first phase or a bigger team or, or the last phase a bigger team? Or say something, uh, about the, something about the team? Yeah, so uh, Moody's is a big organization uh, with uh, 10,000 of employees around the world. So we need uh, rules and frameworks mm -hmm. to accomplish our day-to-day -day work. And so our technologies and our methodologies are pretty well defined. And one of these is TOGAF. So we started with TOGAF from the beginning, but we used uh, TOGAF specific also to challenge our ideas, how we did things based on stakeholders' feedback, user feedbacks, which are the ones that deal um, with reports mm -hmm. uh, on a regular basis day, day to day. So, and we try to evolve and match uh, the need of everybody in the, in the firm from the stakeholders to the users. And using TOGAF, we, uh, we are having great, great results. Okay, and is it, can you say something about the size of the team? Is it a lot of people involved in this, or a fairly small team on the architecture? Um, for you, you of mean the architects. Only for the architects? Yeah. Um, the enterprise architecture team is very big at Moody's, but uh, we have sub teams for different projects. Mm -hmm. Like, I joined this project when it was on the second phase. Yeah. So, um, people change, uh, teams change in size, dimension, people. Um, about a number, I would say around uh, 10 people for the architecture and maybe 20 developers, okay. including also um, uh, data scientists. Okay. okay, thank you. And we have also the support of our vendors. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you have any problems with the analysts viewing this as a project to replace them with machines? Well, we don't want to replace uh, analysts. We want just them foco to focus on what's the more creative part. So we want them to be more creative, spend more time on what the humans are good at. Where they can add the most value. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we want to have this process less manual for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. So they the idea is they see it as a tool to help them and right. do a lot of the work for them, not, not right. necessarily replace them. Right. Okay, good. Uh, so does the AI produce the final published output, or does it draft text for a human to refine for the final output? Excuse me. Um, no, it, it just helps the user. Mm -hmm. I cannot say more than this in the detail. Excuse Sorry me. Sorry about that. Okay. No. Okay. Excuse me. No problem. There we go. Right. Um, what would be the next natural development in NLP, do you think? Natural um, from... Where, where does it go next, uh, the, the uh, natural language? Uh, well, um, natural, uh, machine learning is, has been applied to natural language processing as well. We, were able, we are able to extract information not only from rule-based approach, but also training our systems. Uh, no, well, not our system, but this is where the industry is going. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, have you 
considered using a data architecture approach, such as the FACE standard, to robustly document the semantics of your data? Um, well, uh, we, uh, our the strategy architecture for our database is very well defined, and we have a whole team dedicated to that. Um, but uh, to scale, we need so to scale this operation, uh, this task, we need uh, a different approach, which is machine learning and AI. Okay. Um, if sources are automated and output is automated, how objective will the content be? I guess the, the, the under underlying the question is, uh, it, as it as it becomes more, uh, what what will the machine generated uh, content and output lack um, from in terms of somebody judging, uh, making a call on its objectiveness as it goes out there? Um, well, we have different type of reports, so we generally produce different stuff, and the user will we will be always involved in the. Final review, and the user, the users also manually update news that are relevant for us and information. So the user are still deeply involved and always will be involved in the. Right. Okay. Uh, one of your one of your uh, colleagues who's been active in the Open Group for some time, uh, Peter Haviland, mm -hmm. um, he has uh, mentioned before about the use of the Archimate standard inside. <laughs> modeling standard in inside Moody's. Is that something that's involved in this project? Is it used to, uh, with TOGAF to, uh, as a modeling language? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but I didn't work specifically on the natural language generation right. component. I'm working on more you know, <coughs> other components of the architecture, so I don't have, uh, I'm not sure about these questions, right. this question. So can you say anything about how modeling is done in the architecture in the architecture project that you described using Toga? How how are the uh, how is the modeling approach done? How are the artifacts modeled? Uh, so we have tried to treat the system as not for this specific task, but on a broader uh, view in order to reuse the system and the single components and um, to treat them homogeneously across the with all the other systems we in in the firm. Okay. Um, <laughs> could you help JJ Abrahams write a decent script for the next Star Wars movie? <laughs> <laughs> we wish. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good one, wouldn't it? Okay, I think that's it for the for the questions. Um, Vince, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.